So the next job, I'm going to fit this uh, seal back on the quill, um, and what that will do is protect that top bearing from any. So this sits over the moving part of the quill onto the top of the casting, and it basically protects that top um, taper roller bearing from any oil splashes or anything else that could get into it. So I'm going to get that fitted now. I'm not sure whether this is what I should be doing, but inside the top of that seal, there's some healthy grooves in there that I cleaned, I cleaned all that out when I took it off. Because the bearing is a greased bearing anyway, I'm going to fill that with grease, um, rightly or wrongly because that may act as a if there are any splashes of oil that get up there they're more likely to sit on top of you know not work their way through that grease as if I leave it empty so rightly or wrongly that's what I'm going to do now I know when I took it off there was quite a lot of grease in there so that doesn't, that doesn't mean anything of course that's just uh, Judging by the way it's been built, it could be any. There could be any number of reasons why that was full of grease, but it's going to go back on full of grease, whether it should be or not. The worst that's going to happen is it uh, it drops down and re-greases that top taper roller bearing. So there we go, that's fully packed in there now with grease in those grooves. So we'll fit that. Um, there's a mark where it came off, where the cutout on the casting is, and apologies you won't be able to see this, but it's about there. So it's that orientation. situations where a, a normal Allen key would be far better than the T-handle ones. Unfortunately these threads have all been cleaned out so it's going on no bother. I think that's probably something I've admitted to uh, say in the discussions every tapped hole in this casting apart from the one where the oil sight glass goes obviously because the oil sight glass is still in place but every other tapped hole all around the top inside I've run a tap down them all before I did the clean out just to make sure there's nothing nasty in there now I'm not going to overdo these because there's two rubber seals on there I don't want to uh, over constrain it and distort those seals. Okay, we're going to start fitting the bearings. I'm going to start doing them in shaft number order. So shaft one, which is the input shaft, um, and we'll start with the bottom end. So I'm going back to my list that I made. So shaft one bottom, I'd got this 6007. Oh, sorry, bottom is 6003-2Z numbering on it, and my new bearings that came 6003-2Z. So that's the metal shielded bearing at the bottom. So we'll get that out. Get some clean paper. Whatever I've done with my paper roll. There we go. I'm 
I'm just going to give that a, a wipe over to remove the um, protection oil that's on it. And then I'm just going to do what I did before and put the tiniest um, coating of fresh oil just in the bore and I'll just give the rest of it a wipe over just for now just to keep it uh, hopefully rust free until I uh, get everything reassembled again it's very damp up here at the minute weather wise so I'll just make sure everything's got a good coating of oil on it and I've already cleaned this shaft up so this is ready to fit Now what I'm going to do is I'll fit it that way round <coughs> so that the, the writing on the bearing is facing outwards and that means next time me or anybody else strips it they, they don't need to remove this bearing completely to get the, um, the identification off it. So what I've got here is I've just it's just a bit of aluminium and I've just basically filed it to a almost a, a stubby screwdriver shape and I'm just going to use that to tap this inner race down so that I'm not again putting any stress through the bearing itself so hopefully we'll see how this goes on now these were quite tight to get off so I don't know quite how well or not that they're going to go on. This is where a hydraulic press would be really, really useful. Because you could just press it square on right from the right from the word go, rather than this dancing around thing that I'm having to do. I'm just gonna just to get this going. I'm gonna revert back to my brass. fully seated I think. Just double check it. Now I'll wipe over and make sure there's nothing left on there from fitting that's a uh, completely different <laughs> completely different feel to the ones that I took out that actually feels like a bearing good that's that one done I'm going to switch this round now I think I can grip on there yeah This one is shaft one top, which is 6007-2RS, which is this one.
same thing again. I'm just going to remove the um, anti-corrosion oil. And just give it a very thin coat of, uh, of fresh oil. And again, I'll fit this one with the with the writing facing up the way, so it's easy to see what it is. I'm going to have to revert to this now. There we go. It's nice and obviously you'd expect that, but there's quite a bit of uh, there's quite a bit of friction in there. Lovely and smooth, but a bit of friction. I think what we're going to do is once we refit everything into the mill, I will hand check all the gearing and everything and I'll take you through that just to make sure everything engages and in all the gears and everything smooth by hand and then when we um, when we start the mill up I'm probably going to run it I'll start off at the slowest speed and we'll run it for I don't know 10 minutes in each speed 15 minutes in each speed something like that and just gradually gradually work my way through the speed range and just try and run all of these in a little bit because they are quite there's quite a bit of friction in there. <clears throat> so that's the first, that's the primary shaft done. Um, so I'll not film all of them, it's exactly the same deal. I'll do the shaft number two, shaft number three, and the stub shaft that goes on the spindle, shaft number four. I'll get all of the bearings refitted now, and then I'll bring you back when we're at the mill, fitting them into the bottom bearing registers in the mill. Right then, guys, we're um, we're about to start refitting the various different shafts into the into the head. Um, what I've done is just wrap some paper round the top of the oil seal uh, on the quill there, just to stop any nasties dropping in there and getting to the top taper roller bearing that's on the top of the spindle until I get the shaft number four fitted. So I'm going to start at the back with the primary shaft and then I'm basically going to work my way forwards I think uh, and we'll see how that goes. I really don't know if these need to be going in in some specific order to give me the clearances that I need but um, I don't think so. So shaft number one at the back is quite slender and I've got it in my hand. It's this one so it's a tiny bearing on the bottom, biggish one on the top. Shaft number two has got a big set of gears at the bottom, so that needs the maximum clearance to fit it. Um, and it obviously needs to mesh the bottom gear on shaft two message with this um, 
uh, helical gear on shaft one and then shaft number three has got the big set of gears at the top so that should need the least amount of clearance hopefully to fit it but I, don't, I really don't know we're just gonna suck it and see so what I'm gonna do I'll just get some oil everything's clean in there um, as you saw previously that head's been completely cleaned out inside so I've just got a tiny bit of oil and I'm just gonna make sure everything's really well lubricated for the final fit just until we get any oil in so this is where I am going to be putting stress on the bearings um, because I'm going to be driving the shaft down but actually into the uh, into the outer race is what I'm trying to fit on that bearing but these these are quite slack I think from taking them apart so I'll just get a hide hammer or soft hammer and I'll just give that a little tap and see how it's going to go in and apologies you can't see the bottom of this I'm trying to get you the best view I can um, try and get my hands out of the way See there, I'm not. I'm really not. It's just just the weight of the hammer dropping on this. I'm not putting any any real force on, which is good because it's not stressing the bearing. That sounds like it's home. Feels good. Sounds good. That's one done. On to number two. Same thing, I'm just putting a, a spot of oil onto that onto that bottom bearing. Apologies you can't see all of this. I'll just check for any final check for any nasties or bits of dirt just bear with me I've just found a bit of it's just a bit of blue paper towel um, in between two of the gears I'm just going to use a, my um, dentist pick just to get that out I don't think it would do any damage if I'm honest it's only a bit of blue paper towel but I'd rather it wasn't in there it that all looks clean there's nothing uh, nothing else on there that looks uh, nasty okay so this needs to mesh with the primary shaft as it goes in I don't know about you guys not being able to see anything I'm struggling myself feels about right I'm meshed with you can see it's meshing already with shaft one so that, that's got to be in the right place let's get my uh, soft hammer and we'll just give that a tap keep checking the, checking the mesh make sure
think that's fully out. It's hard to see. It sounds like it is. Ah. I think I might have just come across the first problem. Unfortunately, that needs to come back out. <laughs> I can't get to, and you can't see this, but I, the bearing for shaft number three is not going to go in there now because the bottom gear on that shaft is um, is covering the uh, it's covering the hole. Okay, so that means shaft one and three need to go in first and then shaft two might need to go back in the way it came out which is actually fitted to the the top part of the casting as opposed to fitted in the bottom which is probably why it came out that way all right bear with me I'll um, I'll bring you back we'll just uh, extract this second shaft again and uh, we'll have a rethink all right we'll have another go so this is shaft number three um, I've oiled the bearing up so we'll drop this one in first. Okay, now can I refit shaft number two? Let's have a look. Is there enough space? <laughs> oh, so I see. So you have to fit shaft three first, then shaft two, and then shaft one, clearly. Because there's no way that I'm going to get that in there. Well, there's one thing. It's a good learning curve for anybody else who's doing this. You can learn by my mistakes. Let's see if we can get shaft one back out without too much aggravation. Shall we try again? That's a revolting development. Does that go underneath? <laughs> oh, this is so much fun. So it appears that you fit shaft number two first, then shaft number three, and then shaft number one. Whoever thought you could have so much fun doing this? I 
think it's out. Right then, we'll have another go, shall we? Okay, um, right then, let's have another go. So, after much foul language and head scratching, I've kind of worked out that what you need to do is fit the lower bearing from shaft 3 into the base of the casting before you start. So I've extracted that bearing off shaft 3. Fortunately it came off without any damage. I just used my pullers. Um, so I've fitted that and you can't see it so apologies but I have fitted that shaft 3 bearing into the into the base here now so that's done. Um, just pulling out some bits of nylon that have dropped off the hammer won't do any harm but so I'm going to start again as my original plan with shaft one at the back and we'll see how we get on this time I'm not going to say that's good because it might be coming out again yet. One thing's for certain, I'll certainly know how to do it by the time I've finished. So, shaft two to mesh with shaft one as per the first attempt So far so good. The moment of truth. Now this is going to take some, uh, this is going to take some punishment this one to get in I think. Because they're a bit, as I said before, they're a bit um, They're a bit tighter on the shafts than they are in the housing. The first question is, does it fit? I think so. It's meshed with shaft two. Still meshed with shaft two. Well, who flipping Ray? That was.
was far more complicated than it probably needed to be but anyway the good news is we've uh, hopefully got to where we need to be so now there's some more um, challenging rebuild um, I've now got to put the gear um, selector shafts back in and those little tiny brass uh, bearings if you like and this one's probably not going to be too bad on shaft 2 to get to because it's at the top but shaft 1 at the bottom is going to be fiddly but I think there's enough room just to do it anyway that's um we're somewhere near with that. I think I'm going to fit the gear selectors first and then the final job I'll do is fit the stub shaft on the top of the spindle on shaft 4 once I've got the gear selectors in place just to give myself the maximum amount of, sort of wiggle room down there while I'm trying to put these selectors in place. So I'll bring you back once I've done some swearing about this one. We'll start with a difficult one. Um, I'll bring you back when we're doing that. <laughs> 